So welcome everyone to our uh, study abroad podcast series. So today we have Neha who is from Ras Al Khaima which is in UAE and now she is studying at University of Amsterdam. So we'll be knowing about her journey uh, from UAE to Amsterdam. So welcome Neha to our podcast. Thank you Vishal. Thank you so much for having me. Um I actually I'm from Salem. Um uh, my dad's side of the family lives in Chennai. So I visit there yearly. Um, but when I was five, I moved to Ras Al Khaimah, so I have quite a lot of international exposure already. And um, since then, I was I was just in Ras Al Khaimah for about thirteen years, and then I moved to Amsterdam. Sure, sure. So when you were at uh, Ras Al Khaimah, so I think when you were five, so pretty much you don't have much memory before five, I guess. So you have been living with probably that uh, expat colony, the so-called expat colony. Is that? Uh, I'm guessing correct, or you lived like a separate yeah, house. Yeah, or... um, there are actually a lot of Indians in UAE itself, so it never really felt like I was that away from home. So there was always that sense of uh, community. Um, as for my international exposure, I actually went to an international school, so that's where I got that from. Sure, sure. So the schooling that you did uh, since the age of five, and maybe you changed one or two schools probably. Uh, what kind of uh, people you studied with like who were the people in your class like other countries other uh, cultural differences etc anything you faced in your class as such yeah it was initially difficult to adjust because i actually had no idea about anything international because i didn't move to an international school until i was in the fourth grade uh, so it was really difficult to adjust at first also given that the majority of my classroom was uh, filled with arabs of different uh, countries um, so they already had some similarities amongst each other while I felt like I was left out. I was actually the only Indian girl in my classroom um, and my best friends were Pakistani and Bangladeshi. So it was it was very strange to get accustomed to initially. So you were actually going to the historical roots of India, right? The, the, the greater <laughs> India. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pakistan and Bangladesh were part of India historically. So I think you always find your own kind to mix with. So that's what happened to yeah. you eventually. You couldn't find India. So you, you know, you went like one level up. Okay, let's find Pakistan. And <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. So, uh, uh, so you were, uh, once you like uh, did this schooling till 12th standard or something. So in that, in your school, was it called like a high school, junior school, something like that? Or it was like, till 11th grade 12th grade what was the schooling system like uh so my school offered two kinds of uh, tracks so you could either take the american system and do ap's or you could do the british system and do a levels which is what i did um they offer all ranges of uh, grades so it goes all the way from kg1 until grade 12 so in your case you did call it grade 12 right before going to college Okay, so in your grade 12 or 11, uh, your parents or you like would have sat together and decided that, okay, now it's time to go somewhere or like stay here. So how was that decision of uh, going abroad came? Like, uh, was that uh, an option to like stay back in UAE or you always wanted to like go out of UAE since you already lived there for a while? Uh, my dad has always encouraged me to go abroad and this was something that I that goes back to as far as I can even remember. So even since the first grade, he's always told me like work hard, study hard. I want you to go abroad and get that experience. So in my mind, anything I ever did during my schooling years was for that end goal of going abroad. Sure, sure. And once you were deciding to go abroad, uh, which were the countries that were in your mind to apply for? Um, for my bachelor's, I didn't want to go too far away from my parents. So I was mostly looking around the EU region. Uh, so in EU region, like which all colleges you applied to? Uh, how many colleges in your case? Uh, I applied in two intakes. Um, due to COVID, I actually had to take a gap year. Uh, but in, in the 2021 intake, I applied to universities in the UK, Italy and uh, Sweden. Um, no, sorry, not Sweden, Finland. And uh, in the 2022 intake, I applied to universities in Netherlands, uh, Italy, and Sweden. Okay, sure, sure. So uh, you uh, were you confused uh, ultimately which one to choose or you were very clear that U of A is the, the one for you? 
Um, when it came down to it, I was actually picking between uh, UVA and the one in Sweden. It's called Stockholm School of Economics. Um, the only reason I didn't go with that one was because it was the second year that that particular degree was offered in English. And so I knew there might have been some issues with the degree itself. So I just decided to go with what was already well established. Okay, okay. So they like in the first year was like a very generic degree for them. And the second year was specialized. Was that? No, so the one in uh, Stockholm School of Economics, they were only offering Swedish degrees. So the year I was applying, it was the second year that it was offered in um, English. So I just decided to go with UVA instead. Okay, okay. You mean like it was a new degree just started? Uh, yeah. So you were a bit skeptical about this new thing. Uh, people yeah. want to try the established thing in general. And maybe your parents also probably would have advised you the same. So that's the reason you came to... Uh, University of Amsterdam. Okay, okay, sure. And uh, once you decided you will come to University of Amsterdam, uh, was this the first time you came to Amsterdam or did you visit this before as well? Uh, I visited in 2011 with my parents before, but we never really thought that I would end up there. So you had any like vague memories of your earlier visit to Amsterdam? Yeah, I did actually. I visited some of the monument places and recreated some pictures. So it was really memorable. Sure, sure. So after like 10 years later, 10, 11 years later, when you came to Amsterdam, did you see some changes or it was okay, okay? Like memory recall kind of thing? Some, you know, some, no, some things coming to your mind? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. And which flight did you take uh, from your place to Amsterdam for your uh, the first uh, time you joined the college? Uh, the first time I went, I took Etihad. So I took the flight from Abu Dhabi to Amsterdam, direct flight. So Abu Dhabi is like a few hours from your place? From Ras al Khaimah, it's three hours. Okay, so three hours drive and then maybe three hours of a flight or something. Oh, the flight is seven hours. Seven hours. Okay, so ten hours mm -hmm. of journey. And this time you, like your parents also accompanied you or you came by yourself? Yeah, they dropped me off at the airport. Airport of UAE? Abu Dhabi. Not Amsterdam. Yeah. No, 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 Amsterdam. Yeah. Okay, okay. So they were confident enough that you can pretty much manage your things uh, by yourself. Yeah, I actually flew in with some of uh, the prospective students as well. So that was nice. Okay, okay. So you had a, like a group already and all of you were coming together. So it was okay. And yeah. what about the accommodation in Amsterdam? Like, how did you find the accommodation? Did you find it together with some people? Find it alone? How was it for you? Um, so it was actually really a stroke of luck for me to get housing in my first year because um, UVA does this uh, housing lottery system. Um, so it's uh, you if your name gets picked, then you get housing for one year. So I was actually with the student accommodation for one year. And then the following year, I got lucky again because uh, the first place I went for viewing actually offered me the place. But honestly, realistically speaking, the housing market is really bad here. Um, the, there's way more uh, people looking for houses than there are available so the rent can get really high and pricey so yeah so did you end up getting the pricey housing or economical or midway um, I still think it's a bit overpriced um, but compared to other places and what my friends are paying I think mine is a lot better and your place is uh, near your campus or a bit far how do you like commute every day um, so I can either take uh, the metro, tram or bike to university and all of them take me about 20 minutes. So I don't think it's too bad. So in your case, like, do you bike a lot or not so much? Yeah, I bike almost every day. Oh, so you bought uh, like a bike once you're there, like, okay, fine, let's, let's just follow the Dutch culture. Let's become Dutch now. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. It's really <laughs> annoying in the winter though. <laughs> it gets really cold. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. And once you were uh, in Amsterdam, uh, you had to probably do your cooking, cleaning, etc. by your own, probably in mm. back in home, you know, you may have some help available, but here that help was missing. Did you miss that help yeah. or you were okay with that? Oh, a lot. It was really difficult for me to even get accustomed to that in first year. I think it took me maybe like four months to even adjust properly to that because I was also managing university full time. Um, but eventually we got around. 
and uh, your roommates like the place you live uh, you got these roommates uh, back from your hometown or these are the new roommates you found in amsterdam um where i'm currently staying yeah yeah i mean your roommates flatmates housemates whatever you want to call them um they're more so flat like uh, housemates uh it's it's a student accommodation so i get my own room but the kitchen and bathroom are shared between seven people uh but it's fine because i don't really run into them that much and i really like my neighbors so i don't have an issue with it so when you have seven people and one shared kitchen do you sometimes get conflicting timings with others surprisingly not it hasn't happened yet <laughs> Okay, okay, sure. So, uh, have you ever told them that can you please cook for me also, and I'll cook for you, and we'll do some kind of barter deal? Yeah, we've actually done that before. We're like, let's just cook together and have food together. It's more economical that way. So, are you also used to eating Maggi or some kind of noodles, soup, etc., or not so much? Oh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, Maggi is also famous, uh, like in UAE and like even in Amsterdam. Uh, to eat yeah, the, every now and then. Yeah, the Indian stores here they sell Maggi here, <laughs> and you are used to it. Like since since uh, since Maggi is the savior of all the study abroad students. <laughs> yeah, that's that's my main meal during exam week. <laughs> and did you sometimes also use this hack that cook once and eat like five times, ten times, three times? Yeah, meal prepping. <laughs> I do that every time I cook dinner. I also cook for next day lunch. Sure, 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 and. Uh, what about the uh, cleaning and laundry etc like were you uh, getting adjusted to this was also tough for you or it was okay okay relatively uh, cleaning is cooking. fine cleaning is fine because uh, just do that once a week just sweep the floors and that's fine um and as for the common spaces there's someone who comes in and cleans it every week so th that i don't really have to worry about so it's just keeping my own space clean um as for laundry it's actually a uh, shared uh, laundry space so there is like three uh, laundry machines and three dryer machines uh, between the whole building um also surprisingly no clashes there <laughs> um but uh, it's about uh, 150 for uh, using the laundry machine for use and uh, 2 250 for drying sure sure and ironing you have to do by yourself yeah <laughs> And when you were uh, landing in uh, Amsterdam the first time, how many of you were in the group that flew from the same place? Uh, five uh, with myself included, but they, they actually flew in from India and were having a layover in Abu Dhabi. So, okay, okay. So you found them yeah. uh, through some WhatsApp group here, there, and you all decided yeah. that, okay, we'll meet in Abu Dhabi because I am right here. <laughs> they actually booked that flight because it was the cheapest with the most luggage space. So they said, we're coming on a layover here. I said, okay, let's just coordinate it. I'll book the same flight. And and you all are like staying in the same accommodation or different accommodation? No, we're all staying in different areas. Okay, okay. So it was just uh, till the airport and maybe within the city yeah. somewhere you travel together. So once you landed in Amsterdam, uh, there were like five of you, right? So probably uh, you took the train or you took a cab or how did you arrive to your accommodation that time? Uh, we decided to share a cab. And then five of you probably would have taken two cabs then? Um, one girl's parents actually came to pick her up and then one girl went with a separate cab because she lived in the opposite side of the city. And the three of us then we shared a cab because we lived in the same side of the city. So thanks to them because they already had arrangements so you could all <laughs> chip in together. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise it would, have, it would have been confusing, you know whom to choose and whom to reject. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure, sure. And uh, once you settled in your accommodation with uh, things and then you started going to classes, so you were already studying in this international school and then you came to this international university. So what were the key differences that you could observe in the way people are taught the education system overall, like some things, uh, surprising shocks, etc.? Um, I think I was very shocked about the fact that um, you don't really interact as much during lectures. Um, there are some lectures where you do interact, but mostly it's all up to the student itself. But like when you're in school, there's always a teacher behind you being like, do this material, do this material. You have this to study. But then in university, you're left to yourself. Um, it's completely your responsibility to get your stuff done on time. Um, and as for study material, I feel like university is way more intense. 
um i'd say like two months of my course material covers almost an entire year's worth of school material for example so it's really intensive what about assignments um assignments are doable for me um what i found really annoying in my first year was that i had to write uh, almost like a 750 word essay every single week um so that was really stressful in the beginning um but eventually i got used to it it's really just about structuring my schedule to be able to get everything done this essay was like part of your assignments like every week you have to write on some topics yeah right? yeah okay okay and uh, you had some orientation session also like in the beginning when you joined the college uh, for international students and all yeah so uva does this thing called entry week it's uh, one week before uh, classes begin so you will be assigned to two students who are already um, studying at the university who are doing your same course and you'll be grouped with about 10 students from your uh, course that you're taking and in that way you get to socialize with people who are already in your course and you also get to just spend time in the city you go out partying you go out sightseeing so it's really nice Sure, sure. And uh, when was the time you decided that you should bike to the college and not take metro or other things? Uh, when uh, public transport started getting more expensive. <laughs> so once you came to Amsterdam, did you convert everything to like local currency and check that, okay, how much it, how much it is, how much it is? Lot of math calculation in your head? Uh, initially, yes. Um, but then uh, after a while, you just get fed up of it. You're like, you know what, just just go with it. <laughs> it is, after all, like really expensive to live, especially in the capital city. So, so just just treat it like a number instead of uh, you know the euro or the dollar or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> just just be happy that's a single digit number. That's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> sure. And this uh, bicycle that you bought. Uh, and then uh, it takes like 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes uh, for you every day? Um, I actually bought one in my first year and it got stolen, <laughs> which is very common, happens here. And uh, then I started renting my bike uh, with this company called Swap Feeds. And then I saw that they offered an e-bike option, which it just kind of assists you in biking faster and getting to places quicker. So I actually rent an e-bike with uh, Swap Feeds. So this renting e-bike is cheaper than taking public transport or is as good as that? Yeah, it's actually a lot cheaper than taking public transport, which is how I justify it. <laughs> okay, which is how you justify it. It's like some kind of monthly membership or something that unlimited rights yeah, for the yeah. whole month. Yeah. And plus the physical benefits, etc. So after doing these bike rides, you don't uh, go to the gym or something probably? Or you no, still I, justify I that? No, 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 I also go to the gym. <laughs> okay, so you use the bike to like warm up. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Sure, sure, sure. And uh, the food, uh, like the local food of Dutch, like Netherlands, etc. Uh, did you try some of them and did you like any of them or it was like outright rejected after like trying once or twice? Well, um, I preferred the sweet Dutch foods. <laughs> So they have these mini pancakes, which is really delicious. Um, they have stroopoffels, which they're known for. So I'm a really big fan of that. Um, there's also like this bar food called Bitterballen, which I've tried once. I, it's okay, but a bit too cheesy for me. Sure, sure. And uh, what about like calling the professors by their first name? Uh, was, was that something you, you are used to back in UAE or not so much? No, I wasn't used to it, but I always knew that that was the European culture. So it wasn't really that big of a shock to me. And you were okay calling them by names or internally you felt a bit disrespectful at times? Um, I like that people see each other eye to eye here. So it doesn't really feel like you're being disrespected or you're disrespecting someone. You're on the same level as the person you're talking to. Uh, but what about the tall nature of people? Can you still look them in the eyes? <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> so, I mean, were you shocked by looking at all these tall people that, okay, how can they be so tall? Yeah, it just felt like I was around a bunch of trees, you know. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. 
and uh, there are a lot of canals in amsterdam like uh, you did i mean there are like some boat rides etc a lot of people do uh, you tried any of them um i went on a boat ride with my parents but i haven't actually been on a boat ride since being here okay and then uh, here did you try any part time jobs or any internship or any like clubs etc so far uh, in your education um so i have been fortunate enough to just fully focus on my studies and not do part time work um as for internships i decided to pursue uh, more of my educational path instead um but i am really active at my university otherwise which i think also gives me um enough experience to get on the job market um currently i'm in uh, career week as an acquisition member uh, the safer career week committee um and i reach out to companies and ask them if they want to be a part of our uh, committee and then i try to sell um, some of the events to them um and then sign contracts and such i'm also a part of the student council for my faculty um the faculty of economics and business and uh, this is based on voting so the students of the faculty actually vote you into the council and then there's an internal voting to decide your um, position and i got voted in as the education and research chair um and due to that i would actually be in close contact with the university staff in that case um so yeah how did you decide on the club names um so the in the safer website um they have small descriptions of what the club is and what they offer what they're looking for um i went more so what would benefit me professionally as well as help me um grow personally for your application did you had to write any ielts exam or you were like waived because you are already in an international school i wrote the toefl exam um but i did not submit it because i did the a levels um and because i did english uh, igcse um they gave me an exemption for it sure sure and uh, what are your future goals from now like next few years where do you see yourself in next 5 years oh that's an interview question <laughs> um well as of now i just want to focus on uh, getting the the best ending to my bachelor degree i can um i just want to focus on my grades i just want to focus on my committee work and get that out of the way um i do want to work after i'm done with university um i'm open to um doing pretty much almost anything in the field of economics because that is my degree i take economics and business economics um i have on the side tried like auditing um consulting and data analysis as well so i'm open to job opportunities in that field um i would like to pursue an mba or a masters at a certain point and i would actually like to reapply to that university in um, stockholm again to see my chances okay so that that thing is like a long lost dream <laughs> persuasion that you want to pursue later <laughs> yeah no it's a really good university so i just wanted to see if i could go back there again for my masters sure sure uh what was your uh, understanding of the weather in amsterdam like initially were you shocked when you saw the sun setting up at like 4 o'clock in the evening or something or nothing like that um, you are used to it so when i went the sun actually set around like 9 pm so that was a bit like wow okay didn't expect that um even though when i went to europe with my parents i had experienced something similar when i was way younger um in france um it, it hitting again like after 10 years it was like oh okay wow the days are getting long and then in winter the sun sets by like 4 pm 3:30 pm so it's like if i could go to a lecture at 3 pm it would still be bright outside but i come out at 5 am it's dark so it was really like oh my gosh the weather so unpredictable and it's always rainy here so that as well so usually you know when the sun sets uh, there is this uh, indian mindset or like i think most countries mindset that now things are not safe you know it's a sunrise to sunset people think everything is safe and once the sun sets like when once there's dark 
people start thinking there is a bit of a maybe a unsafe thing did you had any feeling like that or it was like okay okay for you like no uh, i think amsterdam is really really safe um i've come back really late at night i've gone out really early in the morning before the sun comes up even and it's it's really safe to be here um there are certain areas that people tell you to avoid um but i don't usually go anywhere near them anyway so it's really nice here so when your bike was stolen did you feel a bit bad that even though everything is safe but things you know uh, in terms of things it's not so safe in terms of human maybe it's safe i mean something like that crossed your mind no it's actually funny because um, bikes being stolen is very common here so <laughs> i was like okay i guess this was meant to happen at some point so so i think in in your orientation only your like people already would have told you that you know bikes would get stolen but you are safe <laughs> and that's what yeah, exactly. it got better <laughs> exactly sure sure okay great great so coming to the very last question now so uh, there will be you know our podcast will be listened to by a lot of uh, aspirants also so what are the things uh, that you would like to give uh, as a pro tip professional tips to the juniors or the younger yourself uh, before coming to let's say university of amsterdam or similar colleges any few tips that you would like to uh, tell them um but i like to say um your motivation does not matter as much as your discipline um that was something i had to learn really early on um there were so many times when i didn't feel like doing something i i sometimes didn't even want to like get up and go to class or even study afterwards because you know it was a long day but your discipline can get you much further than your motivation can sure so sure. consistency is the key yeah great 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 neha uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, sharing your experience and insights on a lot of things uh, and we hope our audience would learn things from this and we'll be uploading this on youtube and linkedin so there might be some people uh, approaching you with some questions so feel free to answer them uh, whenever you have time yeah thank you so much vishal thank you bye bye bye